Aloha everyone and welcome to the post Hawaii vacation Q&A video. So you guys left some really fun questions on our last update vlog and I thought it would be really fun to spend this beautiful Saturday afternoon which is really 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 cold outside by the way it's going to be 12 degrees Fahrenheit tonight. We were just like in 70 degree weather in Hawaii this time last week so it's definitely been a little bit of an adjustment to get used to the temperatures here in Michigan again. The birdos don't know any better because they've been here the whole time. But anyway, welcome to the Q&A video you guys. So there were some pretty interesting questions uh, left in the last update vlog that I would like to address but first off I would like to introduce you guys to my Nene. So this is my Nene plushie and Chips actually got me the Nene plushie as a gift because he knew how much I really 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 wanted it and it is just so cute isn't it so you guys might be wondering why I'm so excited about this the Nene is the only species of goose that is currently endemic to the Hawaiian Islands there were some other flightless birds and some other birds that were part of the uh, Hawaiian Islands a long time ago but most of them are gone now and the Nene is the only goose that has evolved specifically for Hawaii and it's quite a beautiful goose Chip said that he thought it would end up being just like a big Canadian goose, but they're actually very, very pretty in person. I got to see some Nene, and I was really excited to get a Nene plushie from the National Park Service. It was specifically made, this little one, for the Park Service, and we went and we got ours from one of the parks. It was really romantic and awesome. So I wanted to introduce you guys to my Nene first off. I carried it onto the plane and all the way back home when we flew back home to Michigan. So, addressing your guys' questions, first First of all, I probably need to explain who the heck Chips is. Uh, that's actually Golden Fury's question is, who's Chips? Is that a snack or a friend? The answer, my friend, is that Chips is my beloved boyfriend. So Chips and I have been together for as long as the channel has actually been around. We met a little bit after I started the channel and he goes by the name Chips instead of his real life name because my beloved Chips is a teacher. He is a professor of history and he wants to keep a really professional appearance and he wants to keep a really professional record and he's also kind of shy so he goes by the name Chips instead of his real life name I used to call him Darling on the channel before we ended up getting really big and it was kind of awkward to be like yeah Darling to you know over a hundred thousand people so he has the name Chips for the channel so if I'm ever referring to Chips and it's not in the context of delicious vegan barbecue chips then I'm talking about my boyfriend so yes Chips and I are there who went to Hawaii uh, wow I can't believe that was so was that really almost three weeks ago? <laughs> How does time go by that quickly? How does time go by that quickly? But if I'm talking about chips, I'm talking about him. One day he may reveal himself to the channel, but I don't know if he'll actually follow through on that. We'll have to see. He promised at 250,000 subscribers he would do a face reveal, uh, but he made that promise when we were like around 10,000, so maybe he didn't think it was really gonna happen, and now our community is so curious and nene goose loving and, and, and really into all of our stories and definitely warrior cats loving that maybe we will reach that goal one day. So keep your eyes out for chips. Anyway, speaking of other things that have to do with my real life, uh, such as my birds and my beloved boyfriend, we have a comment from Your Animal Tube who went, where's the vlog channel? I cannot find it. My friend, the vlog channel can be found in the video description of every single update vlog. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can, you can find it in a lot of the normal video descriptions. And if you're really curious, it's called Series Greenhouse. And if you go onto our main channel page, it will be listed in my little friends list. So you guys, can see all sorts of behind the scenes daily life there. I'm gonna be updating the vlog channel a lot more coming up, especially as we get ready to travel the world quite a bit more. In April, I'm going to be going to my little brother's wedding. I'm gonna be dragging my little sister here so she can hang out in the Ann Arbor and maybe she'll be comfortable with being on the, the vlog, who knows. And then in May, we're probably going back to Bald Head Island. And then in June, we're moving to Taiwan for two and a half months for Chips's research. So there's a lot of adventure coming up that's gonna be completely separate from the games and the specimen spotlights we do on the main channel so definitely you want to you want to go poke the sub button on the vlog channel if you want to see all the really funny things happen behind the scenes like setting up the bird's new cage and just you know just Siri just Siri discovering the world I've never been outside of the country before other than like Hawaii that was it was really surreal they just let you on a plane and then you just fly across an ocean and you just get off the plane and you're in Hawaii it seemed like there needed to be a lot more steps like you had to climb a mountain or go through
Yuma Valley or, or I don't know, be quizzed by like guys in black suits about why you wanted to go to the Hawaiian beaches. You, you think of it being something so much more difficult than it really was. So that was really fun. I actually went to Hawaii. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to travel the world. This is so exciting. I can't wait to share it with you guys. So yeah, vlog channel if you want to share those kinds of adventures together. And then on the subject of the plane, uh, we did have a few questions about the plane ride to Hawaii. So Reese, hey Reese, how are you doing my long, long, long term good friend? Wanted to know how long was the plane ride? The flight from Detroit to LA was six hours. And then the flight from LA to Hawaii was five and a half hours. Coincidentally, both of those flights were just short enough that they don't have to give you in-flight meals. So that brings up another great question that I thought was pretty clever. Samantha Rainside asked, what did you eat on the plane? Wondering how that worked out for you and Chips which is no doubt because Chips and I are vegan. And you guys are gonna see we ate really well on the plane. Why? Because you're allowed to take cupcakes through airport security. Yeah. <laughs> We took vegan sandwiches. You're allowed to take sandwiches and pastries through security uh, in the USA. We checked many times and we have started doing that when we travel now. We got the BLT sandwich, the bacon lettuce tempeh sandwich from our favorite place called The Lunchroom here in Ann Arbor. Packed it up in tin foil. He had a brownie, I had a cupcake, and we brought fruit. Um, we packed all that up and chips carried that bag. And then we ate that. And it was so filling and good. And we we definitely ate a lot better than anybody else on the plane because everybody else had to deal with just like some pretzels or some of the dried fruit of like fruit and other foods that you can buy in little packages on the plane so just travelers tip you can take sandwiches through the airport security and you can also take fruit Fun fact, you can't take fruit to Hawaii though. They pass out this form and I was totally freaked out because we still had like some pears and oranges. And there's this form saying you, you have to declare any foreign biological matter you bring with you to Hawaii. Nobody warned me about that. And fun fact, you can't take fruit off of the island either. You have to throw it away before you leave. Uh, no one really explains why. I heard something about a slug. I heard something about a virus. I heard something about, you know, seeds, but no one tells you why you can't do that. I know as a biologist that makes sense to me, but it would be nice if like they put a sign specifically explaining what they're trying to like quarantine one way or the other because it was a little surreal. They have a second set of security when you leave the island to put all of your stuff through security a second time after you pass the first checkpoint and right before you get on the plane. So before you can board your plane, you have to put your stuff through security a second time just so that they can pull out every apple someone might be hiding. That was really weird. It was so surreal. I, did, I wasn't prepared for that. I totally understand why it happens, but no one told me like, by the way, they're gonna throw away your apples or else I would have like, you know, I would have eaten them in time. So that was, <laughs> that was what we ate on the plane. Really well, awesome vegan food from our favorite vegan uh, bakery and cafe. Packed it up, took it through, totally fine. And then let's see, the next question was from Katie and she wanted to know, uh, did the native people of Hawaii recognize you as half Hawaiian? And that was kind of something, and this is treading into my own personal experience territory, by the way. I am part Hawaiian, and I've always really loved that aspect of my culture. My parents really raised us to focus on that and be super excited about that. And going to Hawaii for the first time was kind of also my attempts to learn more about that side of my life, that side of my family culture, um, that side of my, my ancestry and my heritage. And I didn't really see any other people who looked like me on the island. I saw a few people who looked like my cousins and I, a handful, but for the most part, it was just like going to any other USA state I've ever been to. It was very surprising. And again, this is just my personal experiences. It could have just been a fluke of where I stayed. I'm not trying to put any judgment out there. This is just what I experienced while I was there. And nobody else really looked like me. And very, very, very few people actually looked uh, Hawaiian, at least as I recognize Hawaiian from my huge, huge family. We have, I've seen more Polynesian looking people in Kansas than I did on the big island of Hawaii. And that's probably 100% because of where I was. I, we were at kind of the more touristy places, the beaches. Uh, we stayed at some Airbnbs and hotels and things like that. So I think it's 100% because I was there as a tourist and not there visiting my family because they live on Oahu. And we stayed on the big island 
island of Hawaii, but it was definitely something I wasn't really ready for and something that really threw me to look around and it looked just like everywhere else USA I've been and where I still felt like one of the minority sort of people there, where I still was a little bit tanner and my facial features looked a little bit different compared to everybody around me. I won't lie, it did kind of make me a little disappointed, uh, but then it reminded me just how important it is that I do have a lot of family in Kansas and that there is at least somewhere in the world where I can go where there's family and people who look like me and that's just there's something comforting about that there's something comforting about that but it also made me kind of let go of that dream I had of finding somewhere where people did look like me and and we could share that aspect of our heritage and our aspect of our culture because I went to Hawaii and I didn't find anybody who really looked like me. And again, 100% probably because of where I was. If we go again, which we plan to do, I'll probably go visit with, you know, the actual family who lives in Hawaii. And a lot of my family has moved away by now, but at least I know where to find them. So if I really want to want that like like, people look like me aspect of things, I know to go back to Kansas. <laughs> so there's that. That was a really deep and weird and surreal experience. Um, a couple people, like two people, on the like last two days we were getting ready to leave actually, did comment and they asked if I was part Hawaiian because they said they could see that, but I, I didn't really see anybody else who looked like me. Nope. It was really surreal because Chips and I looked at each other and we're like, this is literally like walking around people wise, uh, any, any USA mainland state. It really was with the ratio of people and the type of people, uh, that you saw, even the types of, uh, accents that you heard, they weren't any different than what I was used to. So that was definitely different. That was definitely very different. So there's that one. Oh, and then Reese. Reese also asked, what is your favorite bird you saw? That's the iwi. The iwi is my favorite bird for sure. I really hope you guys are going to enjoy the specimen spotlight we're going to have of the iwi. This is the nene, not the iwi. The iwi is a long-beaked, beautiful red bird that we saw quite a few of inside of the national, let's see, it was a wildlife refuge. So we went to a wildlife refuge. It was a beautiful forest and it was full of iwi and I was so in love with them. They just have the funkiest looking unique beaks and Chips and I, that was probably one of the absolute favorite birds we saw the entire trip. However, I didn't see a lot of native birds where we were at and we had to go on a very exclusive tour to be able to see any of the native birds. They weren't flying around um, where the coast was. They weren't flying around anywhere we were staying. The birds that I mostly saw, believe it or not, were cardinals. So I saw red cardinals. Of all things, I saw cardinals, I saw morning doves, spotted doves, zebra doves, um, and I also saw the minor bird. The minor bird is not native to the continental US, to my knowledge, but they are all over the place in Hawaii, and apparently they're considered pests because they're very noisy and curious, and they chase each other around, and then Chips was always yelling while we were driving, get out of the road, because they just stand in the middle of the road, and so when you're driving towards them, they just kind of hop two steps to the side and ignore the car that's wishing by. So we saw more minor birds. Um, I saw Japanese fairy wren. I saw a lot of birds that were beautiful and not a single one was native to the island unless I specifically went on that very exclusive tour eight hours into the jungle and saw the native species and the iwi was the one that I fell in love with the most. It is stunningly beautiful and it was so much fun to watch that long bill of it go up and down the berries of the ohai tree and to just eat the nectar off of the blossoms. It was it was really beautiful. And also the nene. The nene was my second favorite bird. Do I have to rank them? Can they just both be like up there with my super favorites of having seen? So those are my, my two big ones that we saw that made a huge impact on me though and I really hope I can bring them to zoo crafting pretty soon. That's another big goal of mine. But all right, so let's see. Oh, and then Reese also asked, what is my favorite coral? And this one's going to be kind of fun because it wasn't really a coral. The only coral I really saw were the white chunks of dried up coral that lined the beaches absolutely everywhere, like this piece right here. 
but my favorite thing I saw underwater that wasn't a fish was definitely the red pencil urchin. The red pencil sea urchin, it was unlike anything else I had ever seen and it was so stunningly bright when we were snorkeling and pushing through the waves and the way it was just perched on top of the rocky coral pieces was it just stood out. It just stood out like a beautiful gem that was just snuggled up amongst all of the rocks and the fish swimming around it. I just really fell in love with that red pencil urchin. So that was really fun. We found some other normal look and see urchins as well. This is the first piece that Chips actually found for me while we were snorkeling our first day. And that leads to another great question from Nierne. So Nierne, one of our awesome zoo crafting members asked, how was your first experience snorkeling? What was the lagoon ecosystem like? And what was your favorite fish? So snorkeling was really fun and it was also really scary. I had never snorkeled before. So so I'm really nervous about like not breathing through my nose and putting the snorkel on for the first time. Every time I always watch people snorkel, I always thought there's no way that can be comfortable. There's no way that can work because you just stick a little tube in your mouth and then stick your head underwater and you're supposed to be able to breathe enough. Turns out it works. You can do that. We're definitely addicted to snorkeling now. Chips and I picked a really good place by accident to go snorkeling at our very first day. It was a little beach right off of a lava, uh, lava rock park and we walked across the lava for a mile to get there. We put on our snorkels, we jumped in the water, and we immediately saw fish and eels, beautiful yellow tang zipping all over the place, and that's when I looked down the first few minutes we were snorkeling and found this sea urchin and I pointed it out to Chips and he dove under there, kicked his way in and scooped it up off the ground for me and that is the uh, second sea urchin he and I have found together. And that is also the second time on the first day of our beach vacation we found a sea urchin. So that was really fun. And my mom was so proud and so excited because this sea urchin actually still had his jaw inside and I will be showing you guys the bits of his jaw and the bits of his teeth and the moving parts of his jaw in a specimen spotlight coming up. So keep an eye out for that. But the favorite fish, there were so many and we we're still trying to learn how to identify the ones we saw. But we had our GoPro with us and I was filming every moment I was in the water. Uh, we definitely saw some really amazing moments with the sea turtles that he and I both swam with. And yes, Mandy Flowerwood actually, hey Mandy! excited to see you. I actually commented, you swam with sea turtles? That's so cool. And yes, both Chips and I had the opportunity to swim with sea turtles and it was on accident both times. And that is something that snorkelers in Hawaii are really excited to possibly see. I really wanted to see an octopus. I didn't have so much luck with that one, but I will take a sea turtle. Chip saw a hawksbill sea turtle while he was looking at some coral formations on Hapuna Beach, which isn't even a particularly like fancy beach for snorkeling. It just had one tiny little clump of coral and he was swimming around it and kind of seeing all of the teeny little fish that would zip by and he looked up and there was a beautiful hawksbill turtle eating off of the coral biting off chunks of rock right in front of him and he said that's when he realized that he really didn't want to get anywhere close to that beak so of course we didn't try to chase down or approach the sea turtles you want to because they're federally protected as endangered species give them lots of space but when you just look up and there's a sea turtle while you're snorkeling that's okay and that's what happened to me i was actually snorkeling at the lagoon at the hilton up above kona uh on the the, <laughs> the west side of the island the big island of hawaii there were children splashing around me. It was just a little man-made lagoon that had open access to the ocean. And there were tons of fish in it because the water was a little calmer there and they were really enjoying it. There I was swimming, kicking my way along, going fish, 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 fish. And there was another snorkeler next to me because there were tons of snorkelers all around me. And I looked up. Turns out that wasn't a snorkeler. It was a huge green sea turtle who was at least four and a half feet long. He was gigantic and I have him on camera. So you guys will be seeing him in the future too. So that was what the lagoon experience was like. It was really surprising that some of the absolute best snorkeling we had, including the chance to see these beautiful spotted puffer fish, and they actually started a fight that caused them to jump out of the water on top of one another, that was really interesting, was actually at the hotel lagoon. So we went to all sorts of little beach pockets. The best snorkeling was definitely two-step. Oh my goodness, you guys are going to love the two-step videos. The clouds, just swarms, schools of yellow tang. You dive into the water and you're surrounded on all sides by fish everywhere. But the second best snorkeling we had 
was actually just in the Hotel Lagoon. That taught us a very humbling lesson in the fact that people can really kind of tout like exclusive snorkel, hard to reach locations, but sometimes it's just the stuff right in front of you that's just as good and easier to get to. So just because it's easier to get to doesn't mean it may not be good snorkeling. That definitely taught us a lesson. So that was really amazing. We're definitely addicted to snorkeling. Gonna have a good time. I'm glad we have the little GoPro. So when we snorkel in the future, because it's gonna happen maybe even in Taiwan, then I will be able to share the events with you guys. And then let's see. Oh, my necklace. Yeah, Phoenix Flame asked, is my necklace a stingray? And this is actually a manta ray. So this is another piece that was made by a local Hawaii artisan. And I picked it up in the Peace Garden. One of the absolute favorite places Chips and I went the entire time we were on the big island was definitely the Peace Garden. You guys will see that coming up in some vlogs. It was so, so amazing. It was one of the more um, spiritual and rewarding places that we went. And I can honestly say that it's up there like top three, right next to seeing the lava tube and snorkeling with things we enjoyed in Hawaii. And it wasn't even that highly recommended uh, in the guidebooks and on TripAdvisor, but it was totally, that was one of our absolute favorite things to do was go to the Peace Garden. And I wanted to really, we spent like two hours sitting just holding hands, staring at the birds absolutely blown away by how tranquil everything was. That's how surreal the experience was. And I wanted to really have something special to represent that moment. And so I got this guy. Here we go. So this is the manta ray necklace and it is very, very pretty. And it's made by a local guy. Uh, I think his name is Ben. I think I have his little card around here somewhere. So I'll show you guys when I find it. I'll put the information in the video description or a comment below because it was it was so fun to look down at the little gift shop at the Peace Store and I saw it and I thought about Moana, to be honest. I thought about the manta rays in Moana and how seeing Moana and being able to talk with my mom when she'd been so sick. I saw Moana and my mom was in the hospital and I was thinking about how much I really wanted to go to Hawaii before it was too late and I wanted to share the experience with her. And that was all, you know, Moana and the manta ray was a big thing. And then one of the most beautiful, peaceful moments that Chips and I had on the island there's a manta ray waiting inside of the gift store for me. So that's why I brought this one home and I wore it every single moment we were there for the rest of the trip. And I've been wearing it quite a bit since we came back too. So it's definitely a super special necklace to me. It has a lot of meaning imbued in it already. So I'll have to figure out who the who the creator was because he did a good job. He had no idea it was going to mean so much to me. And then finally, we have a couple more questions. Light Musis asked, what was your favorite plant that you saw in Hawaii? And that was probably the ohai tree because my sister's name, Lulihua, that's her middle name, uh, is named after the ohai tree. And it's a very beautiful endemic tree native to the island of Hawaii. And it has gorgeous blossoms that are kind of like mimosa blossoms if you've ever seen them. And I love those feathery open blossoms that almost look like, I guess, a bird butt. That's kind of what they look like. So the ohai tree was my favorite plant for sure. And that kind of surprised me because I thought it would be the hibiscus. Oh, the tree ferns, the giant tree ferns. Those were definitely another one of my favorites to see. And we saw a lot of them in the forest refuge. So expect to see a lot of them in the videos. They were, they were huge. They were easily seven, eight, nine feet. I've never been near ferns that were that big and I really loved them. So tree ferns, the ohai tree, uh, both native to the island of Hawaii. And then finally, Silver Umbreon asked, did you see any lizards? My friend, I saw so many lizards. You are going to see the vlogs in which I became queen of the day geckos. And those were very special moments. Standing there on the deck with tiny little green lizards and geckos just scuttling away from my feet. Dozens of them all around the place. And then every now and then I would give them an offering of a little bit of banana or a little bit of apple to lick. And it was really fun. So you'll be seeing a lot about the day geckos. I definitely saw dozens and dozens of them. And I'll have to tell you guys about the time that Nanoli made chips scream. I've never heard him scream our entire relationship together except for the moment when Anoli jumped out of the sky and landed on his side. So that was that was a really fun story too. But there we go you guys. I hope that answers some of your questions about what the trip to Hawaii was like. Some of the unexpected things, some of the really exciting things, some of the things we loved, and some of the things we may do different next time. 
So I'm really looking forward to traveling more and bringing you guys with me. So like I've been saying, keep an eye on the vlog channel. I have a long way to go, but I am going to begin to really try to develop my skills better for vlogging, maybe even trying to get a light so I'm not just relying on the sun to be kind to me. And then we're gonna have such a wonderful time. We have adventure after adventure after adventure coming up and it's all because of you guys. And it's also that I can share so much of the beauty and wonder of this world with all of you. So I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for your questions and aloha everyone! <laughs>